give it up for our next headlight tour. I could actually dance to that music. It was absolutely wonderful. Okay, so here's what I'm going to talk about, transi transitioning from UX to service design. And uh, first, I want to set context to why I chose this topic. Um, it's very close to my heart. It's actually my career, uh, right? And so I want to share, I definitely want to share how everybody can transition. And people have been asking me this question. Um, I'm a design strategy and innovation consultant as well as an executive trainer with Human Factors International. And uh, during my service design program, uh, a question that I'm often asked is, how can UX designers transition into service design? How I wish I can answer that question so simply, right? And so in my capacity, I try to, you know, talk to people online, offline, and try to, you know, help them transition their careers into service design. But I also wanted to take this opportunity to address a uh, you know, larger audience who might be interested and who are probably going through this journey and uh, take it forward from here. So I'm going to actually structure this thought in terms of three pillars, I would say. The strategic pillar, the actual innovation pillar, and then the implementation, which is very, very important, especially if you're working in design strategy and innovation. It's not just about coming up with the concepts, but it's also about taking it to the last mile of implementation. I know we are running late, and I also have a flight to catch, and there's so much to share. Let me try and do justice, and let me try and take it through uh, as much as I can, and that's my design challenge for today, by the way. Uh, you know, I... All right, so if, you want, if you're wondering what this is, this is, in fact, I, um, someone asked me this question, how do you get to do what you're doing today? I said, I'm in a good space now, and I'm really enjoying doing what I'm doing. I'm not leading large teams or anything like that. I'm more an independent contributor and an executive trainer. But if you ask me the best phase of my career, I would say now. I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. I'm living through my career, right? I mean, and it's just fulfilling my purpose in every single way. And so I, I was just talking to this person about it, and she was asking, OK, how did you get here? And I said, I did not get here in a, in a day. It took me 20 years to actually get here. And these 20 years, it was not like filled with clarity or anything like that. It was exactly like this, right? I started off as an interaction designer, uh, working in fintech. Um, much before interaction design was even a thing, and this was sometime in 2000 when a lot of mainframe systems were migrating into GUIs and, you know, uh, adoption became a critical success factor for businesses. And we had to figure it along the way, right? I mean, and uh, FIS at that point wanted, you know, to build a team of user-centered design, and we were all just figuring things out. And it was so difficult to convince somebody as to you know, why user-centric design, how it can help businesses. Um, but it just spoke, I come from an engineering background, by the way. It's not like I'm a tr I was a trained designer myself. But this just spoke to me. Um, when I took the training, I said, OK, this is exactly what I want to do in life. And that was just three months into my first role. And so the transitioning was, uh, was interesting, I would say. And I got into UX. And I was working very closely with the team in the US, um, trying to set design, trying to you know, get trained, trying to figure things out, and trying to see how we could take UX into our application. So my journey started there. And uh, five, six years down the journey, I moved to Singapore. Uh, like all women who got married, I had to find a job in Singapore. <laughs> right? And finding a job in UX was not easy, was not at all easy. Um, so I kept postponing my dream, but at some point I had to make, make marriage work also, right? So I took up a job, and it was at Citibank. Mm, well, they looked at my profile and they said, okay, how do we fit you in, in this, right? I mean, you've done, you have something very niche, but we are a banking, we are, we are a bank. So 
And then they said, closer to what you do, we have a role as a business analyst, as a program manager, who could help with gap detection. You know, like how do you move, when you migrate from mainframes into uh, new gen systems, you have to also detect these gaps and make it work for the users. So we need a person there. Would you be interested? And I grabbed that opportunity. I said, yeah, call me whatever you want. You don't have to call me a designer necessarily. Just call me whatever you want. And they, they decided to call me a business analyst. And I was quite happy with that. Right? So that was what I was doing, the first phase of my career with City. And then I moved on into playing uh, more regional roles, like bringing customers, technology, and business together at that intersection, um, right? and then making things work. And then slowly, they saw value in what I was doing. Um, and it would, it would not, so my role was not just confined to doing design, design alone, designing interactions or designing. It was, it encompassed the entire value chain. So it would mean that I was working in the operations, or it would mean that uh, you know, I was trying to improve a workflow solution, or it was something that I was improving an onboarding process. right? But I was able to do all of that because I had a solid grounding in human-centered design. Right? And then fast forward, um, you know, I did learn that service design was what I was doing, so I took up necessary certification and skilled myself in that, and then um, I moved on to doing, taking up design thinking roles in innovation centers, and I've also set up a company which is at, you know, which is like a, a thought leadership forum bringing policy, academia, and all of that. And so my journey has been this to doing what I'm doing. So like today, I think in a presentation, uh, they, somebody mentioned that you, what I was building, Shiva, I think, mentioned this, right? She was saying that you want to become a design entrepreneur. It's the skills, the knowledge, the experience, the capability, and I did not edit it after her presentation. This is something that I said. That's exactly what I would. I didn't know that through this journey, I was actually building the necessary skills, capability, knowledge, and experience to doing what I'm doing today. And I have the necessary qualifications too, right? Um, so that's about my journey, and now I'm going to just share what my journey has actually taught me about design, about transitioning from UX to uh, service design, and how we can, you know, take the step forward. So um, when I talk to a lot of designers, uh, one again, you know, they kind of keep it narrow, right? They look at design, at least the designers who have, I'm not generalizing, the designers who have spoken to me, there, is, there are a lot of myths around service design, right? Um, sometimes uh, people confine it to just tools. Tools are absolutely important, and that's where design is able to add value, yes, right? Um, or that service design is only for, uh, you know, service-oriented companies, or that it's only for large-scale companies. I would say, you know, it all... It's all true partially, but there is more truth to it. Um, so I would say the role of service design, and let's, let's go on to the role of service designer, the true role of service designer is actually being able to, is like that of a design entrepreneur, I would say, except that you don't have to look at bringing in business, but actually looking at it from the perspective of bringing your large, understanding your business strategy, and then taking that strategy to bringing knowledge about the user, solid strategic research, or enabling that strategic research, and then bringing it through building concepts, and then looking at what will make sense, and then coordinating with different departments. So there is a whole lot of, um, a whole lot of things that I would say uh, service design encompasses. So it's not just about designing omnichannel experiences. Yes, omnichannel experience is very important, um, important part of service design, but it's about looking, going beyond the customer journey maps that you see and looking at how do we improve the overall value, uh, you know, value proposition, value chain, looking at where the opportunities are and then refining it at the, uh, to create good customer experiences and good, doing good. Uh, user interfaces, right? And one of the core skills that you will need to do is 
um, or we will need to build is in orchestration. Uh, so we are very good at designing, we're good, very good at doing design strategy for UX or talking to different departments. I would say we need to start looking at expanding that and looking at how do we orchestrate these different um, organization level information, organizational level um, knowledge, right, that exists uh, into something which is very contextual for your business. Let me give you an example. How do you, uh, you know, quickly understand where your business challenge is, which is very strategic in nature? How are you able to pull together necessary information that is required to validate this information, which is one through analytics, through, two through your existing knowledge that exists in the company, three through your, the, the knowledge that you have about your clients, your customers. How are you able to quickly make sense of all of that and put together something that actually speaks to the business, right? Asmina was talking about convincing the senior leadership and they know about human-centric design and they know that's the truth. They already know everything, but how do you bring the necessary information uh, to be able to convince and say, here is where there is an opportunity. Here is where we can actually go ahead, right? Um, in my role at Citibank, this, this actually happened. Um, I was asked to do a project. I was roped in to actually play the role of an orchestrator. But when I got into the orchestrator role, one of the things I realized, and this was for implementing a workflow solution, Documentum, to improve the performance of the sales workforce because the sales numbers were dropping. And when I actually got chatting or when I actually started talking to the business operations and the sales folks, what I realized was that they were good. Everything was there. All the processes were there. The more than the workflow solution uh, that would work for the sales folks, what was more important was actually to look at the fact or to discover that insight that um, they were asked to do a whole lot of activities other than sales, including compliance and a whole lot of things. And that is where the problem space was and that is where the in intervention needed to be. So when I was able to put together and articulate it, they were like, okay, so this is something we want to take forward and we want to implement, right? So, um, so for all of these things, design thinking, facilitating all these conversations, uh, bringing together a group of people, working with online tools, all this becomes very, so here is where you can start with the existing knowledge into, you know, broadening the scope of what we are doing today. So, um, you know, so it's, it's the ability to manage complexity, I would say, that's, that's more, uh, more important. So why, are, why service design? I mean, f it's not for everyone, right? If you're a product designer and if that's your specialization, I would say by all means, please go, uh, you know, um, if, let's say, I mean, and grow in that space. If you're somebody who's AI or advanced technology or emerging technology is something that cuts through every sphere of what we do in, at an organizational level. So I would say that's, that's taken. I mean, that's something that we need to do. But look, why service design is important is primarily because today we are not talking about one. We are talking about many. If you are going to design for AI, it's no longer about designing for one particular touch point, right? You'll, in your team, you'll in, look at it from an, organization's, from an organization's perspective, right? You are delivering value through voice. You are delivering value through other channels, many, many other channels. How are you going to integrate these channels, right? Omnichannel. How are we even going to integrate all of this technology that are required? Because our digital transformation, service design is extremely important because you're not looking at transforming one aspect, but you're looking at transforming a breadth of experiences uh, for your business. And, and it's imperative that we make it work not just for our customers, especially in this, uh, in this scenario of automation. It's also imperative to kind of make it work for every single person who's delivering value to that, uh, to that end customer experience, right? So that's the reason I think I would say that um, it's, it's extremely important and also um, innovation aligned with <clears throat> human-centric outcomes. I'm not going to talk much about it because that's what this conference has been mostly about, and, but it's an important aspect as well. Um, 
So I quickly found this, and sorry about the thing I just thought, I'll put it in. Um, coming to the main point, which is how can UX designers transition into service design? I, um, you know, I'm happy to take this question offline, but let me share whatever I can with the limited time that's there. Right, number one is looking at it from three spaces. So it's not about, service design is not just like one thing that you have. It's it's different spaces that you work in, right? I mean, and so it could be a di discovery phase that you're probably working in and looking at it from the perspective of generating or even discovering what is it that you need to do, right? To, and which could mean that your role will anywhere range between scoping um, to actually, you know, uh, meeting your stakeholders, understanding these different requirements, constructing stakeholder mapping, um, or even being able to quickly map the complexity of the existing service. Let me emphasize the word complexity here because it's beyond just mapping the customer journey. It's actually mapping the complexity of the customer journey, looking at it backwards. So here is where you know, your service design tools come into handy beyond just your ability to manage complexity, right? And that's the need for the skills, experience, and knowledge that I was talking about. And of course, in the solution space, which is much more familiar for designers like us, which is actually taking that complexity into, uh, into coming up with something that is more concrete, into something which is a concept, into a service concept, and being able to articulate that service concept in different, different ways. Um, and being actually, and here is where I think it's very important to also stretch the experience to managing things, facilitating things, right? To drive some things in our ability to quickly, because we are designing a service and there are a lot of ambiguities, there are a lot of unknowns and there are a lot of people that we need to harmonize. And in this day and age, it's all done online and through online tools as well. So that's what it is, right? So, and also having a solid foundation in UX really helps because we are not looking at just delivering end-to-end -end the breadth, but we're also getting into the details of how these interactions will actually play out. Um, yeah? So now, how do we transition, right? Um, while I've just put some points here, frankly speaking, transitioning is not that hard. If you are interested in a career, if, you are if you've decided that, yes, I would like to explore, I would like to, you know, take my next step into service design. I would say wherever you are, whichever role you are in today, it's important for you to look at it from the perspective of where you are, right, and what is the expansion that you can do. Let's suppose you are a UX designer, right, looking beyond UX design and looking at where is this journey coming from? Where is this uh, you know, okay, what is the background to it? How does it power? I'll give you an example. I was talking to a product owner friend of mine uh, running a large, uh, you know, he, he, he's in charge of the digital wealth management. And he was telling me, you know, an interesting thing happened. And our bank talks about customer experience and user experience in a, in a very big way. But today something very strange happened. I said, what? So he said, while we are thinking about digital channels, there was a customer who walked into the branch for a new uh, feature that we had built and they wanted physical and we did not know the branch banking staff did not know how to manage that that query or that and you know that was a that was a huge gap so i said precisely precisely these are the gaps that exist today while we are talking digital while we are talking a whole lot of things and while we are talking experiences between this where is the integration that is happening? Where are the, you know, different customer journeys that we are taking into, right? So as a UX designer, just knowing this, these kind of nuances, looking through these kind of nuances and expanding the scope, expands the scope of your conversation. I mean, that's how it happened for me and whatever I'm sharing, I'm sharing, uh, you know, from my experience. So expanding that scope of conversation gets people to actually notice you. Right, and then you know, doing all of that, all your, all your playing, all the games to get into the right, uh, you know, meeting rooms, and if there's no chair, pull a chair and sit, and all of that um, needs to happen. Number two is um, what happens is we tend to uh, also sometimes get myopic. When we say design, we get myo myopic about user experience design or customer experience design, and again, customer experience design goes beyond branding also, right? I mean, so. Just expanding, uh, expanding our horizons, like looking at it from 
looking beyond the tools. Tools are absolutely important, but looking beyond the do tools of service blueprint and everything, but looking at it as a breadth, right? Where am I adding value to the business and what are the ancillary things that I should know about it? Um, where is this coming from? Or what are the operational processes that are supporting it? What are the, you know, data, where is the evidential data for it? And even if you don't know how to read data, make sense of it, right? I mean, learn to make sense of it. Ask the questions, make friends with somebody who's working in analytics and, you know, just, just find out, just figure out. That is your next step. So it's not like I can jump from here to he there because to be very honest, and I'll also be very truthful here, it's very hard to find service design jobs in India, unless you decide to re-Christian yourself, right? You decide to call yourself whatever, it is not easy. Uh, but hopefully we'll get there. You might have to play a chameleon like what I did, right? And then start small, right? Start by making these smaller, smaller, smaller interventions towards where you actually want to head. And in all of this, I would say the one thing that has kept me in good stead is conviction. Conviction not about where I want to go, but conviction about what I am doing at this moment is the right thing for me to do. Because we are not predictors, we can't, we are not astrologers to say this is where the future is going to be. None of us can with the best of data that is available today. But what we can do is we can trust the process and we can have conviction that we are doing the right things today that will lead you to the right place tomorrow with all of these interventions and making, you know, being open to feedback and making those corrective actions at every, any given point in time. I hope I've done some justice that brings us to the end of the conversation and I hope I can talk more, but the time is less. The future of design is expansive thinking because you know why, we've already discussed this. And uh, if you need to connect with me, I'm happy to connect with you on LinkedIn or on any other platforms. And I'm open to having conversations with anyone who's very serious about transitioning into service design and share my experiences. Thank you very, very much.